I'm finna finish this right now. Now look, me as far as my talent, I know I do good ass, good ass raw music or whatnot. Another piece. That my cigarette burn. Good ass raw music. You made you made your money, right? Yeah. I can easily do a song and then send her the money and be like, hey, I want you to do a feature on this song, and then send her the song with my vocals on there or whatnot, and just the opening part for her. Boom. She do. She put an opening on there. I guarantee the motherfucker song would be raw. But even aside from that aspect, boom, That's I'm building idea. further so bridges. You're saying if you can get, if you can get, a, if you can get enough money to get features from the, both of them, that can cause you to gain some notoriety because they right. both got fans. And if people like you, especially because they'll be your songs featuring them, they'll see your name and you'll start to get some notoriety, maybe. And if not them. now, eventually, in the beautiful part, the third aspect to it is fucking it planted and it's embedded. So it's a part of history in a sense, at least in her space. You know what I'm saying? My space too, but we was able to kind of merge for a second. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's, that's the most abstract, beautiful part of it. You know what I'm saying? Other, everything else is just practical. Hell yeah, notoriety and all that type of stuff. Now, it's another female. She's a popular boxer. I mentioned her before. Her name Hannah Gabriels. We recently kind of spoke back and forth. Actually, we did. She put a post up, and I put, you know, what I thought about the post because she was basically talking about, like, discipline and not giving up. And so I put a comment, a nice little lengthy comment, and she responded. She wrote a long-ass comment equal, at least equal to the one that I put at first. I was like, okay. Then I responded. Then she responded again, telling me, oh, you're great, this and that. Because I basically followed up on the first comment that I made, but I kind of fleshed it out and mentioned her husband some more. And I was like, okay, well, he might not have had discipline like you had it as far as being an athlete. But, you know, if his mother couldn't read and he had to take care of things at the home, that's a form of discipline within itself. When he right. became a boxer, it just transitioned over because he's a boxer too. whole point is, before I go, when she wrote thank you and all this type of stuff, before I got the chance to, to to hit enter on the next comment, the third one that I was typing, which was like, yeah, okay, yeah, you know, all this, blah, 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 but, you know, check out my content when you get a chance. I checked my notification, and she was following me. It says, Hannah Gabriel's following me. That shit is an honor, because old girl, cool as fuck. You know, and she a popular boxer. She look good. So I got some stuff, and then another dude named Hip Hop Mike. He does podcasts. For Hype 97. The freestyle that I was telling you about, 1985, he's one of the people that liked it. But I got quite a few of them that like my shit. There's another lady that does interviews, I forget her name, on the internet. Now, she ain't as huge as somebody like, you know, the people of the Breakfast Club or, you know, Ebro. But, you know, she got a foot in the industry. She interviewed celebrities as well, mostly musical artists. She liked my shit. So I got stuff across the board on my pages. I just feel like, damn, you know what I'm saying? A little more money. Fucking job in the career, mostly. So then I push that shit through. Now, the, the editing. Now, that's going to help my bro the, the vlogs I do. Because notoriety is notoriety. You know what I'm saying? Build a, build a okay, connection. What do you build want a connection. to do? What do, what, what do, you, like, what do you want to do? What do you Ultimately, do? make money slash having a career of expressing myself. So, like, okay. So, podcasts. We're talking about public speaking. Would you do public speaking? Yeah. Motivational speaking for schools and stuff like that. I would, but that would have to be, like, um, I want to say incidental to what I want to do overall. Because right. it's too limiting. You know what I mean? If I'm saying, to, would you do it as, like, a, like some of you are going to offer you like 80 bucks to speak for an hour. Yeah. You would that. do that. Yeah, because I like to talk. And so let's say you kept doing that. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to Endless. keep doing it forever, but I'm saying that's one thing that does interest you. Right. you got to find ways to make what interests you make money. And then take that money and invest it so that you can, can, so that you can maybe just one day sit down in front of a microphone and just talk. And there will be so many people out there that want to hear what you got to say and know who you are that don't pay you to do that. And then the possibilities, whatever you want. 
but you gotta consider this. I hear what you're saying. What you're saying makes well, sense. Saying, yeah, obviously none but of when I say all just talking. When I say communication, of course the listening is a part of it, but I'm really saying like just expressing myself as far as like my thoughts. Right. You don't have to have anybody else on the podcast. No, you don't. But I was saying, like, just motivational speaking alone, aside from, you know, getting, like, $80 to do whatever, speak for 45 minutes to an hour, that's cool. But I, I was saying I wouldn't just settle with that because no. it's too limiting. No, I like to I'm have a little dialogue, too. Want to do forever. I like to have dialogue, saying, too, though. would you do that, like, 10 to 20 times and save up that money so you got a couple grand and then pay somebody to create, to, to advertise for you, adver- create a podcast. Pay somebody a thousand dollars to fucking get ad- real advertising, where people will look at it. You will have to come to terms with either people want to hear it or they don't. But that's really what it comes down to: is you're afraid that once you do put it all out there, you could, you know, you could still fail. You gotta understand that that is a possibility. No, it's you a possibility. Do it. It's a possibility, but I think I this is the part that I gotta explain: the essence, the essence of it. It's the true essence behind all of it. The essence is this. This is something that is something that I do anyway. Like when I do a freestyle, I'm not thinking to myself, man, Puff Daddy or you know, Offset or, or Cardi B or Nicki Minaj, they gonna discover me. I would like that, you know. I hope right. for that, but it's really just I like to do it. I for, for, as far as rapping, so I started. You're saying even if you didn't make money, I would be doing that anyway. Yeah, right. and the vlogging. That's why I'm saying that's a good thing. The no. vlogging aspect, for example. Like, if you go on my YouTube... Not real quick. If you go on my YouTube... I'm going to come right back. Okay, I'll pause this. Okay, like the vlogging part of it, for example. What I'm doing right now is expressing and documenting myself. Do I want it to grow into something that could turn out to be uh, monetary for me? Hell yeah. But that's something I'm going to do anyway because aside from me, see, that's one of the reasons why I don't have a whole bunch of editing of those videos. Like when you watch hey, it, what, what is monetary? Like money, you know, get gaining commerce from it to where it, you know it's like it turns to like a business commodity at the same time. Okay. So like, okay, yeah, if you go on my YouTube page right now, you click on the video. It's going to come on just like a person recording on a regular little cheap smartphone, ca- Android camera or whatnot. That's how it's going to come on. You're not going to get like a, a intro in the beginning with music in the background. I would like to do that, but that's not my main focus right now. If it turns into a monetary game, then I will jump on that editing process even more quicker and then make the videos even more presentable as far as like the total package of it. Okay. Which is probably something I'm gonna do eventually, anyway. It's inevitable. Right, but if it turns to a business yeah, interest, that might affect the model. yeah, yeah, it, it it'll make it a better model. You know what I'm saying? So I jump on it quicker. But even beyond, underneath that in itself, it's the content that I recorded. Not being cavalier, you know what I'm saying? Self confident, of course, that's in there. But I am a hundred percent sure that the content that I provide is timeless because a lot of it is, an ori- is original. Like if I'm reading something historical and I start processing it in my head and I try to make sure I galvanize sufficient, no, not galvanize, but gain enough facts about what I'm reading about and then consider all these facts and then if I feel like I discovered something that's keen, that's notable, Man, I put those shits out on my blog, or I might just talk about something, you know, that type of stuff. Right. The, and I've seen a lot of documentaries in my life, you know what I'm saying? I know about a lot of historians. I've just seen a lot of lectures. I know for sure, you know what I'm saying, based on the large volume of information in the back of my head, the shit that I come up with does not sound like none of it. It's completely different. So I'm saying, like, I feel like I'm, I make history in the moment at the same time, even if the recognition is not there, but it's being documented. You know what I mean? So the monetary okay, so thing is like a fade away, hopeful, I'm not fade away. Smart, guys. What's okay. some of your breakthrough ideas? Like, what's, what's, some, what's your original thought? Thank you for asking that. All right. This right here is a little radical because of the truth. I'll, of I'll listen. 
you okay. can tell me original dog. I give you one. I'm gonna right. give you one right now because I got a whole bunch of them. Okay, just joints. give me one. One of the like the weed okay. you know? Native Americans, for example. Right. Okay. Supposedly, they first came to North America due to, through the Bering Straits, right? Anytime okay. between, what, 1716 to 22,000 to years ago, okay. right? Okay, I'm, I'm, now, I'm, I'm halfway there. Okay, you follow that part. Right. You're talking about 17,000 years ago, Americans came from... You're talking about when, like, the continents weren't even all where they are now. Right. Okay. You had the you still had that little strip of land, the Barren Strait. It wasn't completely surrounded by the um, Indian, not Indian Ocean, the uh, Pacific Ocean. Not yet. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So these people supposedly came over here. Now, genetically speaking, a lot of people say that human beings first entered Europe about forty thousand years ago. It's a guy named Jared Taylor. When he speaks about Europeans, because he's like a, he's a white nationalist, right? I heard a lot of his shit too, by the way. So All across the board. Everybody, no, 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 no. Check it out. One of his contentions is that white people emerged forty thousand years ago. You have a five percent of theory that I know you heard about the story about a guy named Yaku, which is something that the Nation of Islam believes in as well. I'm just saying it's a whole no, different I perspective. No, I have not heard about it. Well, from their point of view, for example, because I gave you Jared Taylor's, from their point of, point of view. White people came about 6,000 years ago through a genetic, genetic engineering process. They call it a grafting process. You're basically taking groups of people and you're merging them sexually. You're trying to get a lighter color. Once these lighter colors come out, then you take that lighter color, you have them have sex or whatever, so they breathe more lighter and lighter. So you're lighter. talking about inbreeding to white people. This, this, is, this, is, this, is, this, their, is, this is their point of view. And it was done, it, it, it was Islam? basically done in like 200, so 200 what? <laughs> I forget exactly how it goes, but basically they're saying white people didn't come about to 6,000 years ago. Okay, okay that's so, their point. So they're of saying that human, humankind is 40,000 years old, white people are 6,000 years old. Yeah. Well, that, well, as far as human beings, no, I think they believe they go back uh, hundreds, they go, they believe we go back millions of years. Who believes we go back millions? People that adhere to this five percent theory, or those are part of the nation of Islam, you believe from in which they branched theory? out from. But no, let me let me tell Bro, you. Wait, I'm, 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 I'm really going to though. tell you do my you original thought. No, I don't. Do you believe no. in Islam? No, no, I do okay, not. Okay, so all right, I got all right, my own same, signature. That's my we're point. We're on the same page. I, I don't, don't believe Christianity either. I believe. In no, no, I got. My, I think I just think what I think. I got my own fucking thoughts. But going back to this original idea, I'm going to try to close it up. Okay, now. No, Christopher people, Columbus uh, came we, here in we 1492, here for right? Of years, no, check this out. didn't do shit for millions of years, but hit rocks against the wall. No, we could get to that too, but I'm just saying, <laughs> but let me just say this also. All across the board, every type of demographic, all like my opinions together, all my opinions so every, far, every, it, every like 20, you're going to find portions of facts and things that I think that's going to offend every type of breed of people. That's what I was trying to say. Like, this particular idea right here is just related to, like, the birth of white people. But I got so stuff you, even beyond this. Believe? What do you believe? What okay, do you based on these believe? facts, Christopher Columbus came here in 1492. Believe, but original thought. I'm, I'm about to tell you what my original thought is. I'm just laying out the facts, you know, the basis of it. You know what I'm saying? The background information, I'm fleshing it out. I'm going to give you the equation first. It is going to lead to what I think. Okay, Christopher Columbus came here in 1492. Right. In his journals, when he was talking about the like. Vikings when, discovered it before him. When he was described. Yes, they did. In 986. But hold on. Okay. When he was talking about uh, how the natives here look. And he was saying like they had like curly hair. Their horse. Their hair was like. Like horse. No, similar to like a horse's horse. hair. That's what horse they said. Horse doesn't have curly But hair. he also pointed out that they were of a darker complexion. Right. And he was saying, like, they kind of resemble the people, I think he said, of the Canary Islands. But when you read his journals, it's a portion, as he's giving these descriptions, where he goes on, he talks about another island that he went to. And it wasn't the Dominican Republic, and it wasn't Jamaica either. It was another island that he went to, to where the population was even darker. Now, I'm thinking about what I mentioned in the car a long time. Now, it probably wasn't you. I think it was somebody else. Cuba? Yeah, he'd been to Cuba, too, but it wasn't Cuba. Okay. It was none of those three islands. So, hey. What's that, 
in my head, I'm thinking about the landmass. The Atlantic Ocean is what? 4,000 miles away. You know what I'm saying? I mean, 1,000 miles wide as far as separating North America and Central America from fucking Europe. Africa and Europe. Okay. It's about 4,000 miles, right? No other population aside from the Vikings in 986 came to the Americas. Or oh, in, of course, like the Africans. Sure. Who I think probably was uh, the knock people, but that's a whole nother story. But aside from that, nobody ha 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 ever came here, here. Genetically speaking, if it's impossible for a white person to produce a darker complexioned individual, when you're talking about the gene L's and all of that, and the variations. If that is impossible through the process of recombination, if he discovered Native Americans in 1492 that were of a darker complexion, that means when they came here between 16, 17 to 22 to 23,000 years ago, that those were black people. So white Who people. Turned, so through white people. Inbreeding, you're saying, turned into Indians. That's what you're saying. That's no, no, I'm saying that the people that came from Russia through the Bering Strait, anytime between what, 16, 23,000 years ago, were black. those were black Europeans, black Russians, or people of color. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying they, because I got a whole. I mean, I ain't I'm gonna, saying, how did they turn into Indians? Just the native culture. Like, for example, when they came here, uh, they began to migrate or, as far as Mexico. And they had like the spears that they had or whatnot, the javelins. Like they I call them spears. The Aztecs the they mines. had like a pointed tip. So you're that saying they shaped. mixed with the Aztecs and Mayans? No, they came much later. These are the ancestors of the, the Aztecs and the Mayans and the Incas and all these people. These are the ancestors of all those black. people. I'm talking about people that go back like thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. I'm not talking about doing Christopher Columbus's time. No, no, I get what you're saying. You're saying, you're saying, you're saying, you're saying 14,000 years ago. You're saying before we have recorded history. I'm saying at least 15,000 years ago, the planet was still filled with people of color. That white people th didn't exist. Neanderthal history, that's a whole different aspect. So but I'm keeping this on the original part real quick. White people did not exist. So it is not true that white people came about 40,000 years ago. Especially when you're talking about people... Uh, moving from Africa throughout the Middle Middle East, probably through so the Black and Caspian believe, Sea, or going came? more when west you, to uh, to fucking Turkey or whatnot. Uh, I, I say I always say at least no earlier than fourteen thousand years ago. And how how do you think they came? I think they came through uh, adaptation. Adaptation through the environment, to the climate. Especially if it's true that, like in Europe, for example, that would make sense. We think I about the Earth and the that. first person was black. That's just my opinion. No, no, but but this but this is my thing. Nobody holds that opinion that I have, and that opinion in itself holds a lot more weight because it's a lot more facts that supports what I think that has nothing to do with Native Americans whatsoever. As far as that one particular original idea I just put forth, white people could not have been evolved to who they are today no fucking earlier than 12,000 B.C. Absolutely not. It's impossible. I don't think white's a form of evolution, though. I think it's more of like a... Like, it's like when you don't use a muscle and it, you, you stop having that muscle. When you don't need to hide from the sun, your skin does, it stops creating that genetic code. And so... Well, it is a weakness if you want to look at it like that. You get what I'm saying, realistically. Or just a difference, either one. Right, right. But I'm saying no. But I'm saying like realistically, it's a body's ability to, you know what I'm saying. It's a body's ability to reflect the sun. You like, already know that's that. Get, get absorb nutrients from, it and you know what I'm saying. And when it's not there a lot, you don't have to do it a lot. Right. You know what I mean? So that would make sense. The I exposure, the time of the exposure, the climatic, like the time of population of people. We would, have, we would we'd originate a sunny place over a cold climate. It's easier to survive in a hot climate. So we would start, every, 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 like civilization would start in a hot climate and then people would move everywhere. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? The melanin absorbs. So they would adapt to those climates, and then you know, then you have Chinese, you have other, you know. But then, isn't China hot as fuck? Crazy. You know, it's a it's a lady named Maria Willowby on YouTube. She's Asian and black. When I look at her, I'm like, that's an example of how people in Northeastern Asia look pretty much. At least going back 14,000 years ago. But that's just on that side. See... That's just like looking at it from like a, 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 a phylogenetic racial sense. It's just differences of people, how people came about. That's what I think. That's just what I think, but... Shit. It's possible. We'll never now, know, but... have you ever heard anything like that in your life? Absolutely not. Nobody never pointed it out as far as like... A, I have not heard anything like Christopher that. Columbus I'll and what he that. mentioned and, 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 and yeah, what that really fucking means. I don't think Christopher Columbus is thinking along those lines yet. I think he is more like, gold! There's gold here! Now, here's another. <laughs> here's another original. Look, here's another original. It's, 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 now, this, is, this right here may offend, you know what I'm saying, certain black people. Uh-oh. Yo. When people say that the Malians came here. I looked this up recently, man. I still ain't do my official blog about it, but I did talk about the shit for like 40 minutes all together in three different parts. But it's original. I got this documented too. First person who said this and noticed it. It's two scholars. It's a lot of them. But they wrote documents. They wrote books and stuff, and they had like facts up in there. And it was one of them pointed out that the Malians came here because a guy named uh, Abu Bakr II. You hear me? Uh, Abu Bakr II, sometime in 1311. Do uh, we got a point, Leo? He gave he gave up his throne because he came, he became privy to some information that America or at least the landmass of America existed. So he was convinced enough to where he got he, he gave up his throne. So that's when he gave it to uh, Mansa Musa, you know the guy that made the famous pilgrimage in thirteen twenty four. Anyway, so he gave up his throne to him so he could pursue those aims. Supposedly, he took like 300 boats the first time, second time, like 3,000, a whole bunch of gold, food, all kind of stuff that they needed for the journey. He went and didn't make it back. People assumed that he died there. But, uh, it's a guy named Bart Bartoloma de la uh, Casa or something like that. He wrote a book in the 16th century. This guy is referenced by some of these scholars. They claimed that in his book he mentioned that John II, who was the king of Portugal, I believe. Yeah, he was the king of Portugal. But during this time, he mentioned, Bartolomeu mentioned that John II claimed that there were some canoes found on one of them islands in the Caribbean. I forget which one. No, I think it's the, the Dominican Republic, that island. It was some canoes found there that were of Malian origin, meaning... You know, it was built like the, the canoes or boats that the Malians used back in the day. So I'll go th I went through the book myself. First, I looked up John II. I didn't see no quotes from him. So then I looked at Bartolomeu's book. It's in Spanish, but, you know, you got to go, you know, you know, pull up another bar or whatnot and then type in, uh, go to uh, Spanish to English translation. And then you can type in, you can copy and paste paragraphs and they'll translate it. Medium, just like that. So I was doing that. So I'm reading in this shit. I'm going through the book. I'm reading. I'm looking at the little history. I'm like, okay, cool. Then I went through some. I kind of like fast forward, try to go through some of the main chapters that's mentioned. Then I went back and I double checked. And then I went to the portion which is 122, 127, up until 139. It's a journey. It was supposed to have been the third journey Christopher Columbus made. And during this journey, that's where it was supposed to be proven that uh, the Malian ship was found there in the Dominican Republic or something like that. Something like that. Now, yeah, 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 yeah. And it was something that was referenced in the writings of Barti Loma during the 16th century in the book. The book is called Historias de la